Hey runners, Coach Morgan here. Today we are gonna be diving deep into my Boston Marathon training. Woo! So I qualified and I'm training for the 2019 Boston Marathon. Today we're gonna be doing a little bit of an interview with myself <laughs> on how my training went, how the Boston Marathon became such a big part of my life and all the juicy details. So follow along and listen in. So how did Boston Marathon first come onto your radar and what has been the experience since from learning about it to now running? So I have been running, this is going into year number 14 almost, which seems so crazy. Um, I started out in seventh grade running really short distances like the 400 meter dash and all the way up through um, freshman year of college. After that, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew that I wanted to continue running, but wasn't sure how. So I signed up for a half marathon and absolutely fell in love with long distance running. Of course, I had my ups and downs as we all do with uh, some of the distance races, but I started wanting to run the marathon. It's always been this big thing, like a marathon, you know, so many people, it's on their bucket list and it's this unachievable, unattainable thing. And I'm like, this is really close and I could be able to do this. And you know, I've been running for so long. I think that I could be good at this. Um, and one of my very good friends who I ran with in high school actually ran Boston Marathon. She was one of the first people that I actually knew when was friends with who ran the Boston Marathon. And being at one of my close friends, it was so cool. Um, but she ran in 2013, which was the year of the bombings. Uh, everything is fine. She is okay. She was nowhere near the explosions when it happened, but it got me very invested in the race and just seeing how supportive and the community that came out afterwards was truly amazing. And it was so cool to see just everyone come together after that. And it just, I knew I wanted to run it. I knew that I had to run this race. Um, also looking back into the history of Boston Marathon being the oldest race out there. Um, also uh, a woman named Catherine Switzer, I don't know if any of you know this story, but in 1967 she was actually the first woman to run the Boston Marathon. Not actually run it because she registered under a name that sounded almost like a guy's. I can't remember the exact details, but the race director didn't know that she had signed up because Crazy enough, in 1967, women weren't allowed to run marathons. It was not allowed, which is not that far away. It seems so crazy. Um, she was actually pulled off of the course, or tried to be pulled off of the course. There's a famous picture out there, which brings a lot of feelings out, I know, especially in a lot of female runners, of the race director trying to pull her off and not let her finish the race. She did and became the first woman to run a marathon. And since then, it's been a big push for women and running, which is just, I feel so lucky to be a part of this community. And ever since then, it's been something that I knew I, I had to do. Not that I wanted to do, but I had to do it as a female runner, that this was going to be something that was going to change my life and hopefully bring out change for a lot of other women. Okay, so tell us about Boston qualifying times, how they work, and your experience with getting to your qualifying time and how your training changed to do so. So I'm in the youngest age group, the 18 to 34 age group, and from there they go up by five years. And every five years you gain a couple of minutes on that qualifying time, so it makes it a little bit easier, but you're getting a little bit older. So for me, being a female in the 18 to 35, 34 age group, it was three hours and 35 minutes is the cutoff. So you get three hours, 35 minutes, and one second, you cannot enter for Boston. But in the past, they always have an average of what time that most people are going to get in. So say a lot of people, females in my age group, run three hours and they take up most of the time slots then some people who are running right at that cutoff line probably aren't going to get in. So for this past year, they actually lowered the standard to get in for 2020, and it's going to be three hours and 30 minutes rather than that 335. 
So the goal is to, you pretty much have to run three minutes under that qualifying time to guarantee yourself a little bit more of a position. I know I had friends that didn't get in just right over that 330 or right under that 335 time slot. So my training really started to change when I noticed that I was really close to that three hours and 35 minute mark. I started putting a lot more time in the gym, strength training and doing mobility work. And I also started going back to the track because I had not stepped foot on the track through that whole training cycle leading up to that 335 marathon that I did. I put in some longer um, intervals, shorter intervals, really getting that speed back under my legs. And I felt much more confident going in to the marathon that I did qualify for Boston in. I felt a lot stronger, a lot faster, a lot lighter on my feet, and it made the race just that much more enjoyable at the end. So give us a rundown of what a week of training looks like currently. So to break it down kind of day by day, I mean, it's everybody's different, right? My schedule is not what your schedule looks like for working and stuff like that. So Mondays normally are my one of my strength days. So I go into the gym and then I would do like a little shakeout run afterwards, maybe somewhere three to five miles. Um, normally after strength workouts, I like to kind of shake everything out, kind of moves the lactic acid around and doesn't make me feel as stiff the next day. Tuesdays are my day off because I'm here filming for you guys. And <laughs> I just need a little bit of a rest, especially coming off of a heavy weekend. Wednesdays are my track days, so speed work. I end up usually doing a pretty high mileage that day because especially when I do like mile repeats or 800 meter repeats, uh, the distance can get up there pretty high. Thursdays, I do another little strength day, not as quite as intense as my Monday, but uh, definitely get a little something in there, maybe more just body weight, core exercises. And that day will normally be my tempo day. Nothing super fast, especially because I just did track on Wednesday the day before. Then Friday is a lighter day because I normally will do my big long run on Saturday. Saturday or Sunday, depending, it's normally been Saturdays, this training cycle. So Friday is just nothing super intense, kind of just moving the legs, turning over a little bit, getting ready for Saturday. And then, like I said, Saturday is my long run. Try to wake up early, simulate race day, even on the beginning end of my schedule when uh, you know my long run was only maybe seven or eight miles. And then Sundays, I try to run on tired legs and do a little bit more. I would normally try to do half the distance of my long run. Um, when the long run got it, started getting up into the 20s, uh, I would still dip back a little bit, maybe like seven or eight miles. And then, yeah, that's it. And then pretty much mobility uh, almost every single day, 10, 15 minutes in the morning, 10, 15 minutes at night, something along those lines. I was having a little bit of wiggles with my foot and knee, but just kind of kept moving everything out. And so, yeah, I've been healthy, haven't run into any injuries knock on wood so it's been working for me really well and i'm really excited to execute on race day hi hi sorry Ooh, just finished some 800s out here the polo fields in golden gate park i took a little vacation from the track to uh come out here because it's nice and quiet and there's literally no one around <laughs> which is great uh, i'm getting a little psyched up for it in boston now so i like sometimes tend to hibernate i guess uh, isolate myself a little bit just because i'm trying to like mentally prep i literally just got done guys give me a break here doing some 800s today keeping them fast and consistent at this point all the work's done this is just keep it going the race day. Oh my god. Guys, this camera is getting really heavy to hold. <laughs> I'm so tired. But good. I felt I felt good. I felt fast. Uh, yeah. I have my last big run coming up this weekend. I'm gonna do like 22. Oh. Uh, it's supposed to be really nice weather, so that's good. But yeah, feeling feeling good. We're about three-ish weeks out right now. So, yeah, just 
getting in that mental prep, thinking about race day, thinking about race weekend, when we're aware what the weather's gonna be like, cause who knows? I'm just gonna pack all the things and hope for the best. But I'm really excited. I'm, I'm ready. I'm finally feeling, not finally, but I think my body is now ready. I haven't run a road marathon since the San Francisco Marathon in July. So this should be, should be fun. My last race was a 50K on the trails. So that's back in December, yeah, December. So I'm really excited to get back to the roads, get a nice fast run underneath my legs. And uh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna cool down, guys, and I will uh, catch you later. Okay, so tell us a little bit more about when that knee and foot started bothering you, and how you dealt with that, and if it had been worse, what you might have done to change your mental perspective on training. Yeah, so one of the first things I did before I even started really training was I knew I needed to prep my body to take on the higher load of marathon training. So I went in and um, started working with a personal trainer. I've been working on a lot of stability work and things like that to really prep the body. Um, during my training, yeah, I had a little issue with the foot and a little issue with the knee, nothing super serious. But as soon as I did start to feel something during a run, that's when I just, I stop. If I feel a little pain, after a run, not pain, but like soreness, because pain is a word that you use when something is actually painful, right? It's not sore is okay. You want to be sore, you're going to be sore going through marathon training. Pain is different. Pain tends to lead to injury. So if you feel pain during a run, I will pretty much stop the run right there. There's no point in making it worse to get in an extra mile or something like that. It's just not worth it. Um, but luckily I didn't have that. So what I was doing when I was just having that soreness afterwards, mobility, strength, trying to get rid of it, but it was still just kind of like nag on. So I went and saw a chiropractor. Um, I talked with my personal trainer and we did a real all over body assessment and found out that I just wasn't activating in my hips. So we've been starting to do a couple of workouts really focusing on that. But for myself, I know it sucks when you're injured. I have been injured before, and that's why I'm doing so many things to prevent it. Mentally, it's tough. You just want to get back out there and go run. You've Maybe you've already qualified and you're getting ready to run Boston, and you're like, oh my God, I've done all this work and now I'm gonna get injured, or you're feeling really good and you're coming up to a race where you think that you're gonna qualify and it just like all hits you, you're like, I'm not going to be able to do this. So take the time, recover. You've put in so much work already that taking a few days off is not going to affect you as much as you think. Go see a doctor. I know you'd like, I'd like la 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 la, I can't hear anything because I've been there too. I don't want to listen to anybody because I don't want them to tell me what the bad news is, but it's okay. You've got to do that. And one of the biggest things is sleep. Sleep is huge. I know personally I need to work on that. I, everybody does. That's a huge thing. Um, I would sometimes sacrifice uh, one or two miles of some of my runs for an extra hour of sleep because it is that important. That's the only time that your body really has to recover as those few hours of sleep that we do get at night. So yeah, uh, mentally I know it's tough, but I know everyone says listen to your body and like I don't want to sound cliche but if you're feeling tired sleep if you're feeling pain you got to deal with it so that's my best advice okay race is in one month <laughs> how are you feeling uh, what do you have planned as far as getting in for the day and that week and everything and ooh, any other thoughts you have <laughs> closing thoughts yes um, so I'm feeling nervous and a little anxious but that's pretty normal for me. Um, the anxiety more comes from the flight because it's, woo, we're in San Francisco across the country, which is home for me, so that'll actually be fun to head back east. But I made sure that my get in like super early in the morning on Friday, so I have plenty of time to 
adjust time schedule and settle into my hotel and just whew, can breathe for a minute before I have to start thinking about the race. Physically, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I, do, I never want to say like, yeah, I'm feeling totally 100% uh, just because I don't want to jinx anything. <laughs> but no, my long runs have been feeling really good. I did my 20 miler last week and I'll have another 21, 22 mile this week. So we'll see how that last one goes. My speed work was one of my main concerns coming back into this training because I had recently just trained for a trail 50K where it's long, slow, sluggish miles. And so coming back and like sprinting on a track, I was like, oh. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling much more confident and now. The speed has definitely come back, which is just a really great feeling to go fast again. So I'm feeling pretty good. Um, really, I'm just ready. Uh, this has been something that's been on my radar for five years and I'm just so excited to get there. Every person that I talk to who has been through this same experience is just like, you're gonna love it. You, the camaraderie just of Boston in general that entire weekend is something that I'm so looking forward to. The people, the spectators, just everyone is so into this weekend and it's just, yeah, I'm just so excited to go. I can't wait. Hey guys, Coach Runner here. <laughs> Coach Runner here. But, you know, look at me now. No, <laughs> That's not what I wanted to say at all. All right guys, there you have it. All of my information for you on training for the Boston Marathon. If you guys are looking to start upping your training a little bit, make sure you check out our two week quick start training program. It is two weeks of free workouts delivered right to you. All you need is your email address. The link is down below, so make sure you check that out. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Drop any comments down below. Wish me luck, four weeks till Boston. Um, subscribe to our channel, guys. I want you to get these videos into your inbox each and every week. I will catch you guys in the next one.